Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I realize that you had other options and still you decided to join us for our first Bible study of this year, the new year of 2021. And I'm so thankful that you made that choice. And I pray that your time will be worthwhile spent here. Our, uh, this is our first Bible study, and our text for tonight is Romans chapter 12, verse 1 uh, and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now we are continuing uh, with the teachings on uh, systematic theology. And systematic theology is any study that answers the question, what does the whole Bible teach us today about any given topic. Amen. Now, though the word of God's personal addresses are always seen in scripture to be the actual word of God, they are also human words in that they are spoken in ordinary human language that immediately uh, gives us understanding. The fact that these words are spoken in human language does not limit their divine character or authority in any way. They are still entirely the words of God spoken by the voices of God himself through human beings. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness. Uh, an, another version of that verse, the message version, maybe it will be a little bit more understandable, is of 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Now, it says every part of scripture is God breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth and exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes and training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. We are equipped by God to do his will, and his will always has mankind's best interest at heart. Now, Logos, the breathed word of God, is uh, the understood word of God. That's a, a good way to understand, to, uh, to have a meaning of Logos, the understood word of God. In essence, like in Luke uh, chapter 24, verse 32, and they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? In other words, they are saying that Jesus gave them an understanding of the word of God and what had been going on. There's a lot of things going on constantly in this world in which we live and God's word will give us an understanding of what's going on so that we don't have to walk around scratching our head and scratching our chin and wondering what's going on. God's word is where we can find answers. Also, Luke uh, chapter 24, verse 32 uh, the message version says, back and forth, they talked. And they said, didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road, as he opened up the scripture for us? He gave them understanding. Now, the difference between Logos and Rama, uh, or Rima uh, is, uh, once again, uh, Logos is 
uh, understanding of the word, and rima is the spoken word. Like in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 1, uh, and I'll read a few verses of that uh, through to about uh, verse 4. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Here's where it starts getting interesting. All of that chaotic scene is about to change. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light uh, was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. Uh, I really got ahead of myself. I forgot to tell you what I'm talking about, the subject for tonight. The subject is the transforming words of God in personal addresses. The transforming words of God in personal addresses. In other words, as he spoke through uh, common men and they spoke what God had inspired them to speak. And it has a transforming effect if we were to believe it. Now, again, uh, the word logos, the second, in the second person of the Trinity, both in his person as the perfect image of the Father and in his office as the revealer and revelations of the Father and as the creative words uttered by the Father. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21 uh, says, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they uh, were carried along by the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's kind of like when you're typing on a typewriter on a keyboard for on a computer, and as you type, the words appear on the monitor. It, it, the Holy Spirit was kind of like leading the men along to, to speak as they were being spoken to. And God's word is God talking to us. And, 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 and please hear this. God's word his, his, in its written form as we read it is first of all to the individual doing the reading. And then in the sharing, it can be helpful to somebody else. But God seeks to help us individually and then collectively. Also, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 said, and this is the message version, says, For no prophecy recorded in Scripture was ever thought, uh, thought up by the prophet himself. It was the Holy Spirit within these godly men who gave them true messages, true messages from God. Now, some theologians have argued that since human languages uh, are, are all, has always been in some sense imperfect, it, that they feel that they've, they've argued that any message that God addresses to us in human language must also be limited in its authority and truthfulness. But these messages and many others that record instances of God's word of personal addresses to individuals give no indication of any limitations of the authority or truthfulness of God's word when they are spoken in human language. Quite the contrary is true. For the words always places an absolute obligation upon the hearer to believe them and to obey them fully. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 says, See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way that I am commanding you today to go after other gods that you have not known. So 
to disbelieve or disobey any part of the word of God, even though it's in human language or our language. And, and thank God for translations because, and I'm not talking about King James, uh, New International, or American Standard. I'm talking about English, Chinese, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, all of the different Spanish and whatnot. All of the, God's word is being trans, uh, uh, interpreted or tr not interpreted, but trans translated into different languages so that all of man can, can have an opportunity to believe or disbelieve. And to disbelieve or disobey any part of God's word uh, is to disbelieve or disobey God himself. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 and 20 says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Blessings and curses. I, 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 I uh, didn't realize that that was coming next. It just seems natural for it to come next. Life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that you and your offsprings may live. So extended life or good lives, useful lives for us and our offsprings, generations to come, can be obtained through obedience to God's word. Verse 20 says, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him. In other words, not just oh, not just hearing, but doing what he said do. And continuing to do what he said do. For he is your life and length of days. That you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give unto them. And then Romans chapter 1 verse uh, 16 says, For I am not ashamed, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. Jesus, the word that was made flesh and lived among us for 33 years, transformed water into wine one day at a wedding. And that's found in John chapter two, verse five through 10. Uh, those are the verses that I read. It says, his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. And in this day and age, this modern day and age, it behooves us all to do whatever Jesus tells us to do, whatever God tells us to do, Trust the word of God. Even if you don't trust me, trust the word of God. Verse six says, now there were six stone jars, water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding about 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus said, remember his mother said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. So now Jesus tells the servants, feel the water jars. The story is uh, that that uh, they were at a wedding, the reception, and they ran out of wine. And it was very embarrassing and could be costly to run out of anything needed uh, at the reception or the banquet, wedding banquet. And that day, a lot of times it was called. So they ran out of wine. And, and, and have you ever ran out of anything? and Jesus showed up in a mighty way and fulfilled your needs? I have. So he says, fill the jars with water. They needed wine, and Jesus tells them to fill the jars with water. And they filled them. They did what he said do. They filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. And when the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine. 
and did not know where it came from. In other words, Jesus uh, transformed water into wine. Woo, what a mighty savior we have. Everyone served the good wine first. And when the people are drunk, then they just bring out the poor wine. But the master said, you have kept the best, the good wine, until last. And so often in our lives, the Lord saves the best for last because he wants to transform us some. The, I believe one of the big reasons that we can't just, like we have the song, and when I get to heaven, I, I, talking about walking around heaven, and I, I'll get to heaven and I'll just walk right on in. The reason where we can't just walk right on in anytime we want to is the Lord has to do some transforming of our mind. So Jesus transformed the water to wine, thus uh, performing his first earthly miracle. Now, in coming weeks, we'll look at how the word of God transforms mankind, even the worst of us. And I'm not bragging on how messed up I am. I'm bragging on the great work that the Lord is able to do in the worst of us. And if you think that you are as good as you think you are, you're deceiving yourself. Allow the, God, allow, the, allow the word of God to reveal God to you and you'll be able to get a better picture of yourself. And you'll cry like, who was it? Isaiah, woe is me, for I'm a man undone. And I dwell among folks that have unclean lips. By believing in the transforming salvific work uh, of the Son of God, in that he died, they buried him, and in three days, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth. And he's able to lift up bowed down heads, open blinded eyes. He spoke to a lame man and said, take up your bed and walk. And the lame man did just what Jesus said do. And he went away walking and carrying his bed and he came somebody carrying him. And we got to learn that the word of God, if we will obey Jesus, that he will transform our lives. Woo. Everything Jesus has told me to do, no matter how difficult, he, along with the command, gave power to do that which is difficult and even some impossible things for me. So that's what I've got for you today. Trust in the transforming word of God, even though it's in human language, so that we can understand it. Don't get caught up in all of that speaking in tongues, because God wants to reveal himself to us no matter what uh, language we understand. He can speak to us in our language. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for uh, helping us to, to submit ourselves uh, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind through your word. Help us to, to, to see the value uh, in, that we can be to ourselves, our families, and to those whose path we cross if we would only allow you through your word to transform us by the renewing of our mind. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Don't forget to mask up, practice social distancing, wash your hands often, and pray and study God's word. And we'll make it through this. Thank you for joining us, and I pray that your time has been well spent. May God bless you real good, and we'll see you for Bible study next week and Sunday morning for our uh, virtual worship event. Take care. Bye-bye. Be safe.